All right, tech fans, so I see you guys are leaving a shit ton of comments down below or where are the Risen tests? Well, I gotta tell you, we're not getting very much support from AMD right now. So I went ahead and we bought all of the Risen CPUs ourselves. They'll be here next week and then we'll bring you guys all the Risen testing. Now, already before Risen's come out, we've seen that Intel started slashing prices on their CPUs to be competitive. Now, this is something very interesting because usually AMD is always the price leader with Intel being the performance leader. But the rumors are having it that these CPUs are actually going to be able to keep up with all of the same Intel CPUs. Now, here on Tech and Tomorrow, we have a lot of things going on with Risen. I purchased all three CPUs. Actually, my buddy John from TLD bought those for me, so peace out, John. Thank you very much. So we have all three of those CPUs coming in the house. I've gotten a bunch of motherboards lined up from various manufacturers. Anthony has made a totally custom badass case for this. We'll bring that to you in a few days where you guys can see it. It's just the ultimate fucking case for building an AMD system. I think you guys are really going to dig it. Now, how I'm going to do my testing this time is going to be a little different than I normally test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do all my testing based on dollar per dollar testing, which means that if an AMD CPU costs $499, I'm going to try to find the exact equivalent CPU from Intel at that same price point. The same thing all the way down the line. There are three new CPUs coming out from AMD. Each one of those CPUs will be competing with. Now the exact specs are actually the 1800X, the 1700X and the 1700 vanilla flavor. Now, obviously the standard 1700 one isn't going to be geared for doing the most ultimate overclocking, but obviously they're the ones with an X at the end of them. These are going to be serious competitors for overclocking. So I'm gonna to try to get a button, hold it. I'm showing my words here. A buddy of mine is Fugger. You guys might know him. He's a supreme overclocker. He's been around for years. He's been doing stuff. He competes with all those guys like Kingpin and all those guys. Well, I've been friends with John Worth for a long time and I'm gonna contact him and actually help him reinvigorate all of our overclocking stuff. Which is really funny because in the very beginning, I was one of the first people to ever do overclocking. And as overclocking got to be something where you had to like have huge giant tanks pouring liquid nitrogen and stuff like that, I kind of shied away from that. And the reason being is if you guys follow the channel, you guys know I play guitar. So the thought of me losing one of my fingers by an accident totally alienated me from overclocking. So even though I pretty much introduced overclocking into the world, uh, it got so out of hand that I just like let it go. These guys nowadays who do overclocking that way, I mean, I think it's cool for competitions and stuff, but let's just be real. Are you gonna sit at your house in your room with a giant tank and pour liquid nitrogen into your CPU all day to keep it running at those high speeds? And most of the time, they burn up the CPU completely ruining them. So is really doing that extreme overclocking anything honestly but a dick wag? I mean, is it? I mean, in reality, what do you guys think? I wanna hear you guys opinions really down below. Do you think that all this extreme overclocking is anything but dick wagging? Do you think that it actually has any real relevance in uh, everyday tasking and stuff? I really don't think it does. And in fact, with overclocking in general, I just feel that the performance level is so minute that to heat your CPU, shorten its life and all that stuff for me, eh, I prefer actually just run my CPUs at stock. I mean, I'll do overclocking for the videos to show you guys what's going on, but me personally, I like my CPU to last as long as possible. I don't know what you guys think, but that's how I feel. So, stuff coming up this next week, NVIDIA stuff, that's right. Gonna be heading up to San Francisco tomorrow morning, in fact, for the NVIDIA stuff. So that means, guess what? What do you guys think? Let me hear your comments down below. What do you guys think I'm going to be seeing at NVIDIA Editor's Day? I wanna hear your guys' comments down below. Will it be a 1080 Ti? Ooh, I don't know, but I sure the hell hope it is because that will be one bad ass card. Also, I do have new AMD cards coming in. We have some coming in for power color. So this whole new Risen launch, have no fear. I may not be able to be the first one to have this stuff out on the table because I have to buy it myself. But believe me, my reviews now will be completely gloves off. I'm not gonna have to like in the future, like say anything nice. You guys always want me to be like the most raw, crazy reviewer. Well, guess what? You're gonna get your hopes up now. We're actually gonna get a chance to see that. Cause from now on, if I can buy all my parts, get all my parts here, I can say exactly what I want about everything. And that's my plan for 2017. So I'm Eric. You guys have been watching Tech Tomorrow. Next week's lots of exciting stuff. I got a new engraver coming in. I got a 3D printer coming in. We're trying to work with this other company called Xcar. Lots of cool stuff coming up here on Tech and Tomorrow. So stay tuned to the channel. 
When I get back, I'm sure I'll have news for you guys of what happened up at Editor's Day at NVIDIA, and there'll be some more cool stuff at the end of the day. So have no fear, Risen will rise on Tech of Tomorrow. You have my word. Mr. Buddy here is getting uncomfortable, so thank you guys for watching the channel. We'll see you guys back here next week for more videos and more stuff regarding AMD's Risen. Ha, 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 ha.